Once again, welcome to Medico Mallu. This time, we are going to discuss a small but very important topic, the Parkinsonism. What is Parkinsonism? It is due to an extra pyramidal lesion, more specifically in the negro striatal pathway. It is due to either increasing the neurotransmitter acetylcholine or decreasing the neurotransmitter dopamine. And it is concerned with involuntary movements. Coming to the Parkinsonism features, remember this term TRAP, T-R-A-P, T for tremor, R for rigidity, A for akinesia and bradykinesia, P for postural instability. Akinesia means loss of power of voluntary movement, whereas the bradykinesia means there is slowed down movement. And as a whole, there is difficulty in initiation of a voluntary movement. Let's see the etiology. Mainly, it is idiopathic. And this Parkinsonism with idiopathic cause is known as Parkinson's disease. And this should be thorough as there is much confusion between Parkinsonism and Parkinson's disease. Secondly, it can be atherosclerotic type. It can be post-encephalitic type. It can be due to repeated head injury more commonly in boxes known as the punch drunk syndrome and it can be due to Wilson's disease, neurosyphilis and it can develop due to drugs. The drug induced Parkinsonism is of reversible type. Example of the drug is phenothiazines and this Parkinsonism can develop due to cerebral tumors and also by Huntington's disease and hence while diagnosing the case, we have to rule out jaundice history, Wilson's disease, and history of atherosclerosis, cerebrovascular attack history, and encephalitis history, and drug history too. What are the features of Parkinsonism? Mainly, there is masked face, means there is loss of expression in the face. We can notice pill rolling trauma in the patient which is a rusting tremor. Pill rolling tremor means the patient's hands seems to roll a pill between its fingers. And this is a rusting tremor means this tremor is seen only when the patient's hands are resting. On initiation of any voluntary movements, this tremor vanishes. There is serpentine stare due to infrequent blinking. We can notice titubation of head and there comes the rigidity. Rigidity is a pathognomic feature of extra pyramidal lesion. And this fascinating gait is a characteristic feature of the Parkinsonism. And the glabular tap is positive, which is known as the Meersen sign. And there is wide palpebral fissure. And as we have seen before, there is bradykinesia. Regarding the gait, the patient attains a simian attitude, which is of universal flexion. The patient walks with rapid, short, shuffling steps without any arm swing. There is retropulsion, which means the patient walks back when pulled from behind. And there is difficulty to stop the movement. And next comes the term kinesia paradoxica, which means the patient feels easier to run than walking. Let me show you a video of a senior doctor demonstrating the gait of a Parkinsonism patient. This video is taken from YouTube. Initially, there is difficulty in initiation of walking. And later on, the patient attains speed gradually and watch for the tremors in both the hands. And this is how the patient turns around, slowly like a statue. And again, there is difficulty in initiation of starting the movement and gradually the patient gains the pace. We can differentiate the Parkinsonism based on its causes. In atherosclerotic type, there is bradykinesia more predominant than the tremors and the rigidity. 
In idiopathic type, that is the Parkinson's disease, the tremor is more predominant than the rigidity. And the rigidity is of cogwheel type due to the presence of significant tremor. In post encephalitic type, the rigidity is more predominant than the tremor and the tremor is not much significant and it is associated with higher function impairment. As the tremor is less significant, the rigidity is of lead pipe type. And there is oculogyric crisis, which means the extraocular eye muscles are having spasm and hence the eyes roll up and the patient can't look down. In this type of Parkinsonism, there is poor response to levodopa treatment. And in this post encephalitic Parkinsonism, there is pyramidal tract involvement with features of extensive plantar bilaterally and brisk tendon reflexes. There are some significant eye signs in Parkinsonism. They are reflex blepharospasm, which is known as the Meersen sign demonstrated by glabellar tap. There can be blepharoclonus, which is the fluttering of the eyelids. And as we have seen before, there is oculogyric crisis. And next, there is reversed argyle robertson pupil, which means the pupils react to light but not to accommodation. In simple argyle robertson pupil, this is just opposite. The pupils are constricted, not reacting to light, whereas the accommodation is intact. And lastly, there can be a serpentine stare. Next, we have to look what is Parkinsonism plus. There are classical Parkinsonism features like akinesia, rigidity, in combination with features like autonomic dysfunction, oculomotor dysfunction, cerebellar dysfunction, and even cortical dysfunction. And this is seen in various neurodegenerative diseases like progressive supranuclear palsy, which is the most common disease where this Parkinsonism plus is seen. And it can be seen in multi-system dysfunction, Wilson's disease, Huntington's disease, normal pressure hydrocephalus, Alzheimer's disease, etc. And this is the Parkinsonism plus. We have to stage the Parkinsonism disease. Stage 1 where only the disease is affecting unilaterally. Stage 2 has bilateral involvement. And in these stage 1 and 2, we can treat the patient with simple anticholinergics. In stage 3, the disease is affected bilaterally with mild postural abnormality. In stage 4, there is bilateral involvement with severe postural abnormalities and in stage 5, the patient is bedridden or in wheelchair. Let's see the treatment of Parkinsonism. Stage 1 and 2, which is a mild type, can be treated with anticholinergic drugs and selegiline. Examples of anticholinergic drugs are trihexyphenidyl, bipyridin and bensexol. Stage 2, 3 and 4 with moderate to severe disease type can be treated with levodopa and carbidopa in combination with bromocryptin, combed inhibitors, catechol or methyl transferase inhibitors, examples tolcapone, entacapone, etc. We can go for physiotherapy or occupational therapy. And finally, if the disease is severe or if the disease is affecting a very young patient, we can go for the stereotactic surgery where the pallidotomy is done. And this is the overall treatment. What is on-off phenomenon? After 3 to 5 years of levodopa treatment, dyskinesia can develop, even for a short period of time. It is due to narrow therapeutic index of levodopa and how we are managing it by decreasing the dosage of levodopa or giving levodopa in combination with selegiline. And this is the end of our topic today. Keep this in mind. Successful people are not gifted. They just work hard and succeed on purpose. And this is your Medico Malu. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe.